My name is Ryan Emanuel. I'm a professor in the Department of Forestry and Environmental Resources at NC State. I'm an environmental scientist and I study mainly climate change and water. We already know a lot about climate change. We know that it's mostly bad and that human activities like the burning of fossil fuels are mostly responsible. We understand many of the ways that climate change can harm human communities and natural ecosystems here in North Carolina and around the world. One part of the story that is often overlooked, however, is the fact that climate change doesn't affect all people equally. Some people are impacted more severely than others by hurricanes, floods, droughts, and heat waves. All of these things are made worse by climate change. Some people live in communities that lack the resources to deal with the negative impacts of climate change. They may lack financial resources, or they may not have access to health care or reliable access to basic necessities like clean water. Access to these things makes some communities more resilient to climate change than others. People who have access to these resources can use them to adapt or recover quickly when natural disasters or other adverse events happen. Here's one powerful example that shows how climate change doesn't affect people equally. This map of the United States is from a paper published a few years ago in the journal Science. Here, researchers computed the cost of climate change for each county in the United States based on the average income of people living in that county. They found that people in some counties, those shown in warm colors, would spend a higher fraction of their income dealing with the negative impacts of climate change than people in other counties, shown in the green shades. The costs include things like damages to crops from droughts and floods, heat-related illness, and higher heating and cooling bills. What's striking to me about this map is that the places where people will be hit especially hard are places that have relatively large poor and minority populations. In other words, these particular groups will shoulder a disproportionately high share of the negative impacts of climate change. Marginalized communities are hit hard not only by climate change, but also by pollution and other types of environmental degradation. This is because of a long history of siting landfills and other hazardous sites in their communities. When we talk about the inequitable impacts of climate change or any other environmental harm on certain groups of people, we're talking about the topic of environmental justice. Environmental justice focuses on identifying and addressing the negative disparities that are created by climate change, pollution, hazardous infrastructure, or other factors that impact the well-being of communities and their surrounding environments. Oftentimes, these communities are already vulnerable for socioeconomic and other reasons. In the United States, Native American tribes are among the most vulnerable groups in society. And in many places, tribes shoulder the heaviest burdens of pollution, climate change, and other harms. The Navajo Nation in the Southwest, for example, has spent decades dealing with the legacy of toxic uranium mining on their lands to support U.S. energy and weapons programs. Tribes in the Great Plains deal with water contamination caused by oil and gas extraction. Native peoples in Alaska are experiencing some of the fastest rates of global warming on the planet, and the loss of permafrost and sea ice is transforming their homes right in front of their eyes. Here in North Carolina, which has the largest Native American population in the eastern United States, tribes also shoulder heavy burdens when it comes to pollution and climate change. I'm a member of the Lumbee tribe, which is based mainly in Robeson County. The people of Robeson County, including Lumbees, are expected to incur the greatest economic damages due to climate change of any North Carolina county. By the year 2100, Robeson County could spend well over 10% of its total income dealing with the fallout from hurricanes, extreme heat, droughts, and more. At the same time, Lumbees and Native Americans from other tribes in Eastern North Carolina are much more likely than the average North Carolinian to live near waste disposal sites for industrialized agriculture. These places include spray fields for hog waste and land application sites for chicken litter. These types of operations didn't exist in Eastern North Carolina until the 1980s, 
but since then, they've multiplied throughout tribal territories in North Carolina's coastal plain, exposing people to harmful air pollution and water pollution that didn't exist a generation or two ago. Native American tribes in North Carolina and elsewhere are actively involved in efforts to have a voice in decision-making about the environment. But one major limitation is that decision makers and leaders of governments and corporations often forget that we're still here. We continue to live in the homelands that our ancestors occupied prior to colonization, and we exist as communities that are strongly rooted to our traditional practices, but also fully adapted to life in the 21st century. The work of amplifying the voices of Native Americans and other historically marginalized groups is an important component of environmental justice. One goal of environmental justice is to come up with sustainable solutions to wicked environmental problems like climate change and pollution from industrial food systems. In the most basic terms, to be sustainable is to leave the world a better place than you found it. This definition is similar to an idea that was introduced by the Haudenosaunee. You might know them as the Six Nations of the Iroquois, whose government inspire parts of the U.S. Constitution. The Haudenosaunee have a concept called seven generations thinking. The basic idea is that every decision we make today should be made with regard to its impact seven generations into the future. The seventh generation should have clean water and a good relationship with all things on earth, living and non-living. Part of maintaining good relationships is working to ensure that some people, especially the most vulnerable people, aren't shouldering a disproportionate share of the environmental burdens connected to energy and food production, industrialization, and other things that make our lives easier, but can have serious implications for pollution and climate change. During your time at NC State, I urge you to seek out opportunities to learn more about environmental justice. You'll find it embedded in courses throughout the curriculum, and you can also find opportunities for research or independent study with professors on campus. Some of these professors work in my college, the College of Natural Resources, and others are spread across the university. You can also participate in extracurricular activities related to environmental justice through the sustainability office or student clubs on campus. The opportunities are limitless.